Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So Akko Gear was kind enough to send me the Mons Geek Fun 60 Pro, which is a 60% Hall Effect keyboard that actually packs a lot of features while still being a very budget friendly keyboard. And in this video today, we're going to unbox a keyboard, give our opinion on this keyboard, and then we will test it out in some games. So let's get on with the video. So first thing I'll say is Akko Gear did send me this out for free. However, they did not sponsor this video or pay me to review this product. So all thoughts and opinions are my own and I'll make sure to be 100% honest with you guys and give you my genuine opinion. So this is how it comes packaged. Obviously it comes uh, inside a standard box as well. So it's got some decent packaging. Obviously, this is what it looked like. I had it the wrong way around. Obviously, no one really cares too much about the packaging. We just want to know about the keyboard. So obviously, you do get your little keycap or your keyboard cover just to protect it. It's like a dust cover. And you do get this separate part that pops out as well. Maybe some spare switches as well. So you get your keycap and switch puller, which is pretty standard for most keyboards nowadays. So as you can tell, this keyboard is hot swappable as well, so we will go further into detail with that. But the cable is quite long, which is nice because sometimes they will supply you with a really short cable. And you do get a little instruction manual. And this is the keyboard. So this is the ISO layout one. And as I mentioned earlier, it does come with a bunch of features. So this keyboard is a hold effect keyboard. So of course you're able to adjust the actuation within their software, which we will cover later in the video. And this keyboard does actually have an 8,000 Hertz polling rate. And it also is cross compatible with a lot of mainstream magnetic switches, which I will go over again later. We'll go over some of the switches that it's compatible with. Of course, it's best to only use the switches that um, they say are recommended or compatible with this keyboard and some of them switches include the Akko Windy slash Glare, the Gatoron Jades, the Gatoron Jade Pros and the Gatoron Jade Gamings, the TTC Uranus and TTC King as well. They are all compatible switches. But this is what the keyboard looks like. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. But the RGB is actually pretty bright. I have got a light on over this desk, so it may make it look more dim. But actually compared to the RGB on the Mad 60 HE, which is my main keyboard, this does already look much better, a lot more vibrant and a lot better colors. So my initial impression of this keyboard is it does look nice. I would have loved if they sent out a white version of this. Obviously I didn't even request that, so maybe I should have done that. Just because I have a lot of white and blue in my um, setup. But overall it's got a very sleek and clean look to it. Now I will just unplug it and show you the backside. So you do actually get the flip up feet as well. You can have it slightly angled or you can flip them down and flip it all the way up with these. Which some people do like having it tilted a little bit. It gives the keyboard a bit of a nicer angle for typing. So as mentioned earlier, the Fun60 does provide compatibility with five third party magnetic switches. And pretty much the users can choose the appropriate switch from the Monsky driver list. So at least that way there is some guidance from the manufacturer on which switches will actually work. And then that way it's down to you which switches you actually use and you have got a bit of customizability there. Okay, so of course you want to know what the keyboard sounds like. So now we're going to do a quick sound test of this keyboard. Okay, so there's a sound test of the keyboard. Now, if I'm absolutely honest, compared to the Mad 60 HE stock, the switches do not sound as good, but as we already know, you can swap out these switches and you can use a wide range of different switches. I could take my Gator on Jades out of my Mad 60 and put it in here. And the thing is, 
obviously it's hot swappable so there's a lot of customizability you can do you could definitely do a few mods and make this keyboard sound even better but overall for the price and the features that you get with this keyboard it's definitely a good option so of course as mentioned this is an 8k polling rate um, keyboard so what this means is that you will get them ultra fast response times and smooth and more precise inputs now 8k polling rate definitely hasn't become the norm in gaming i actually use a 1k polling rate keyboard and i have no uh, issues with smoothness or response times but there are many people out there that probably use an 8k hertz polling rate keyboard and they probably won't want to use anything else so at least with this keyboard you do get that feature of having an 8k polling rate and obviously at a good price as well so what i would actually like to do is take one of the keycaps off and have a look at the switches so we will use the tool that comes with the keyboard so that was much easier than getting them out of the mad 60 he which i don't know if you guys know or have used that keyboard but it was really hard to get them switches out and i had to use a metal um, switch puller and i was even bending the switch puller because they were that hard to get out so at least these switches here wasn't hard to get out now these switches right here in my hand are the echo glare magnetic switch so I will put all the details and specifications on screen as as you guys know I am quite new to keyboards so I don't understand everything fully and I am learning every time I get a new keyboard or try and mod a keyboard myself. Overall a very solid switch. Another thing to mention as well is the stabilizers on this keyboard seem really good. There's hardly any wobble or play on the spacebar or any of these longer keys. So as mentioned, yeah, this keyboard has a bunch of different features. You do have SnapKey, which is Monsgeek's implementation of SOCD, which prioritizes the most recent key presses for switch directional changes without releasing previous inputs. So this is especially useful in FPS games. And obviously, as mentioned, it's a hold effect keyboard, so it does have an adjustable actuation distance. So I think it depends on the switch you're using, but as long as the switch is compatible or on the Monsgeek list, then you can actually go into the software and calibrate it to know that it's got the new switches in. And the actuation point is anywhere from 0.1 millimeters to 3.4 millimeters. So that's a good thing as well, is that you have got that adjustable actuation for every single key. So you can just adjust it exactly how you want. And you also get rapid trigger with this which basically dynamically changes the key's actuation and deactivation points. And through the Monsgeek driver, you can actually choose all buttons or per button customization modes, as well as active non-stop rapid trigger for near instant key response. It's actually really well made with multiple layers of foam and plates. This gives the keyboard quite a spongy feel. But this means that the keyboard doesn't actually feel like hard or anything. It's got a bit of spring to it, which actually will improve the sound as well. So now that we've talked about all the features with this keyboard, let's hop on our computer and set up the software. And yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and install the driver. So as you can see, I've already got it installed, but I will show you how. So you come over to this download center. So you go to support and go to download center. And then straight away here, this will be the latest version and it tells you what keyboards it supports as well. So we will click download and once we've clicked download, we can unzip the folder and straight away here we've got the driver for the keyboard. So let's open it up. So straight away it's just initiating the device. So we just got to wait for that. So over here we've got lights, which would be for the RGB and we can select color. But yeah, the RGB is pretty good. Of course, I'm doing this in the middle of the day. But at night time, I think that's going to shine quite nicely. All these colors seem to be pretty accurate. But this is how you'd obviously change the uh, keyboard lighting on the RGB. And you can change the mode as well. You could change it to ripple. You can change the speed of it. So everything that you would expect from a software um, for the RGB, you can do that here. So let's head over to main now and then custom actuation. So I, I assume you could, could we select all of them? I'm not sure. If you click here, there we are, it says all keys. 
So that's going to um, select all the keys on your keyboard. So there we go, that would, if we put it to 0 0.1, that would mean the actuation is at its lowest. So we would only have to slightly press the key to actually make it activate. And you can do a key test here as well, which, which is a pretty cool feature. So you don't have to go to your search bar or anything just to test. And then same with up, you can change. So there's two different settings. You've got press and up. So I'm only lightly tapping that as well. So let's try and put them all the way to the top and see what it feels like then. Yeah, you really have to press that key in. It's almost like a membrane keyboard like that. That's with the actuation set to the um, highest. So I'm having to press the key all the way in. Once again, you can set them all the way low if you want. And I assume that if we were to unselect this, so if we confirm that as it is, so it does actually give you a tip as well. So it does actually say here that when the travel is set to the high sensitivity, it may be affected by environmental interference and cause buttons to be accidentally touched. So you can turn the tips off, you can confirm it. And I assume as well, if we were to, let's say we wanted the space bar to be different to the others, we could then adjust the space bar and it says this change will affect just the space. So we could set this slightly higher and in that way when we're gaming, all the keys that we need to press fast, whether that's your weapons or different actions in the game, you could then have them all fast. And then with your space bar, let's say that's your jump and you don't want to be accidentally stuck jumping. Because let's be honest, things like something like jumping or secondary binds, I'd call them, you tend to be pressing quite hard anyway. So that's how to adjust all the actuation and everything. You have got a setting here, which when you click on this little um, question mark icon, it does say next to it, non-stop rapid trigger. When enabled, rapid trigger will only stop when you fully release the key. So if we select all keys, then we've got the non-stop rapid trigger on for all keys, and it's already at the lowest actuation anyway. So that is extremely sensitive. I would argue that's probably too sensitive for a lot of people, at least for having it on every single key. But yeah, overall it seems very responsive, and the software seems great as well. Very easy to use, obviously, I've not used this before and it was very simple to find actuation, the lighting. So you've got here as well, it says calibration, reminder. The keyboard auto calibrates every second. Mandatory calibration of max key travel is only required when replacing key switches after firmware upgrade in case of non-responsive key issues. So if you've changed the switches in this keyboard, you will need to come here and click on calibration. And then it will say it's travel calibration in progress. And what you've actually got to do is go along and press every key, hit confirm, and it's going to calibrate everything. So that's a very good thing as well, is um, a lot of people were saying to me before with my previous keyboard, Mad60, people were asking me what switches work, they were saying when I've used certain switches, a rapid trigger wouldn't work. At least that way, you already know from the website what switches will work. And you can come in here, calibrate it, and it's all gonna work perfectly. As long as the switches you're using are the ones they've recommended or have said will definitely work with this keyboard. So a few other things, we've got profiles here. I think you need to log in, but you can set different profiles. The benefit of that is you could have a gaming profile and with very low actuation points. So it would be extremely responsive. And then let's say you're doing a lot of video editing, typing, or just chilling. You could, sw you could switch to a different profile and have the keys not as responsive, which I think is a great feature in itself as well. So you've got your function of highlighted keys here, your FN keys, you've got macro, and I assume this is where you can share profiles. Yeah, so there's different profiles, so that's actually pretty cool. So I guess these are like the community shared uh, profiles for like RGB and stuff. So you can like it and then you can actually go to your my like and um, select all the different ones that you um, have kind of liked. And like I said, I think you need to log in for this. In the about section, you've got obviously the app version. You can check for updates. You can check for the firmware uh, version. You can upgrade it here. And it says here, the firmware is the latest version. Does not need to be updated. But now we've had a look at the software. Let's hop into a game. We're hopping to some Fortnite. We'll see what we think of the keyboard, see how it feels. And then that way I can give you an actual in-game experience kind of opinion about what this keyboard feels like. Overall, I think it feels really fast.
So it definitely feels very, very fast. Of course, um, I've been using a Hall Effect keyboard for a while anyway. So it feels pretty much similar to that. But yeah, it actually feels really great. It feels very responsive as well. So yeah, overall, really nice experience while gaming as well. So overall guys, I actually think this is a really great keyboard. Of course, there's a lot of competition nowadays for budget Hall Effect keyboards. And honestly, the only reason I went for the Mad 60HE was at the time, it was just a video I seen of this really cheap Hall Effect keyboard. For a very long time, Hall Effect or adjustable actuation keyboards like the Wooting or the Apex Pro TKL for example, they were always very expensive and for a while there wasn't many budget choices but now there is a wide variety of choice for Hall Effect keyboards. So really the question is would I recommend this keyboard to someone? I absolutely would recommend this keyboard. It looks good, it feels good, it obviously has all the features and stuff that you want from a fast keyboard and as you can tell the actual RGB is really good on this keyboard, much much better than some other Hall Effect keyboards I've tried. I really like the addition of the flip up feet, I know a lot of keyboards have this but my Mad 60 HE didn't. But overall, if you're looking for a budget keyboard for under £50 that you need to be fast while still looking really good and sounding pretty good as well, this is a great option, the Fun 60 HE. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will also leave a link to this keyboard in the description and you can use code SPECBENCH for 10% off your order as well. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon. Yeah. <laughs>